Hi folks, today I'd like to take a look at what happened in 2022 that will impact 2023. New stories that will have a lasting impact on the tech world, but also the intriguing projects I first came across in 2022 and whose progress I'm going to be watching in 2023. To me, 2022 is first and foremost the year of the rise of the machines. Debates raged around Google's Lambda chatbot. We saw the beta release of OpenAI's ChatGPT and GitHub released their AI-powered coding tool called Copilot. 2022 also saw the rise of image generation AIs such as OpenAI's DALI 2 and Midjourney, both of which are a lot of fun. And I'd be surprised if we didn't see new and exciting advances in this field in 2023. 22 is also the year when a few lines of code saw the downfall of two big tech names. First, Elon Musk activated the ability to purchase the verified checkmark on Twitter with disastrous consequences. But that at least was out in the open. Unlike what happened in the crypto world, FTX's crash in November of 22 showed that just being on a blockchain doesn't guarantee trustworthiness. FTX had a few lines of code that gave a free pass to their sister company, Alameda Research. That allowed Alameda to borrow any user's money without having to provide collateral. And that is what led to the crash that shook the crypto world. 2022 was also the year the economy started tightening up. Layoffs hit staff at tech companies such as Amazon, Meta, Google, Better.com, Booking.com, Crypto.com, Stripe, and of course, Twitter. And among the companies laying off staff was Salesforce, who own Heroku. And so it wasn't a surprise when Heroku announced the end of their free tier. Thankfully, in 2022, we also saw the rise of a number of backend as a service solutions. Superbase grew in popularity. AppRight released their version 1.0. In 2022, we also saw the rise in popularity of Nest.js, the Angular inspired server framework. And maybe 2022 was in fact the year of the server. Even on the front end side, the most popular front end framework, React.js, focused heavily on server features. Next.js version 13 felt like the reference implementation of everything that React 18 had created. In the same vein, 22 also saw the release of low or no JavaScript frameworks, such as Astro, which hit version 1.0, or Quick, which was released in beta. And we saw a slew of other front-end frameworks releasing or promoting their meta frameworks, or as I like to call them, their full-stack frameworks. So Vue already had Nuxt, but SvelteKit, Svelte's meta framework, reached version 1.0 in December and it promises to make Svelte even better. 2022 was also the year that the Solid framework was released. And there is a lot to like in Solid. Their meta framework, Solid State, is still in beta though. There are still exciting things to come there. Finally, it feels like we're talking more and more about Rust for specialized applications. For example, Next.js's release came with a new bundling tool called TurboPack, which was coded in Rust. I'm fascinated to see how that trend develops. All in all, 2022 has been both a bumpy ride and an exciting year, but I'm even more excited about the doors that have been opened, notably in AI and in server-side rendering. So bring on 2023. And I want to thank all of you who have been along for the ride, who've watched the videos, who've liked them, and who've left comments. And I'll see you in the next video.